John Bolton, one of the most dedicated neocons ever, he finally got asked a question that he should have been asked a thousand times already. He's never been asked it yet. Um, he went on Mehdi Hassan's show to try and sell his new book, and this happened. So let's talk about the, the, the complex issues you said you wanted to discuss. You say in your book that unlike Mike Pompeo, who had to recant his support for the Iraq war during Senate confirmation hearings, you didn't have to uh, because you were not confirmed by the Senate as National Security Advisor. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't have any regrets. You never have apologized for the Iraq war, unlike a lot of other former supporters of it, like Joe Biden. So what I'm wondering is all those thousands of people who died in Iraq, all of those innocent Iraqi civilians, men, women, children killed by U.S. airstrikes, some of them in massacres at Hadithah, Mahmoudiyah, Balad. None of those weigh on your conscience? None of those deaths ever keep you up at night? You don't know what you're talking about. The, the Iraq war, which was the period that lasted about four weeks uh, and resulted in the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, was a brilliant military victory by the United States and other coalition forces. Uh, and that, the uh, removal of Saddam Hussein from power, was the right idea at the time. Uh, and it's true today. But you say it's simply not right, but the reality is hundreds of thousands of Iraqis died. There was torture, millions of refugees, and that did follow from the decision by George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and others in the administration like yourself to invade Iraq. Hundreds of thousands of people died. And just to go back to my question, which you didn't answer, do those deaths never, do those deaths never weigh on your conscience was my question, which you didn't answer. No, I did answer it, and I'll answer it again since you didn't seem to listen to it. The, the fact was, after the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, uh, a number of decisions could have been made in different ways. I don't believe in U.S. participation in nation building. I think nations have to build themselves. Uh, and had the United States followed through with that approach, rather than uh, engaging in extensive nation building, the outcome, I think, could well have been very different. Well, that's rich. So his argument is, I don't believe in nation building. Ha ha! Ha! Okay. Um, had the U.S. followed through and did the war the way John Bolton is describing here, then the outcome may be different. All right, so hold on, John. You said at the beginning, oh, the Iraq, the actual war only took four weeks. Okay, so if we withdrew all of our troops after four weeks, you'd be cool with it? So let's say topple Saddam for it took, you know, it takes four weeks or whatever. Then we all get out all the U S troops, contractors, all that stuff. They get out. Would John Bolton have been like, yes, that's what I want. They, I don't believe in nation building. Let them build their own nation. We got rid of the bad guy. Now it's on you. Is that what he wanted? He's lying. That's not what he wanted. John Bolton still argues to stay there to this day. So this distinction he's trying to draw of like, well, there's the war, four weeks, and then there's the occupation, and that's the problem because, you know, I don't believe in nation building. So then why are you still in favor of being there to this day? Saddam's been dead for a long time. He wants to still be in Iraq. He wants to still be in Afghanistan. He wants to add Iran to the list and topple that government. So he's just lying. Not only is he in favor of these wars, he's in favor of the occupation, and it's not even true when he says, oh, the Iraq war took four weeks, and then after that it was something different. When you go into a country and stay there, overthrow the government, and then park there and occupy it for years, that's part of the war. That's part of the war. We're still at war with these countries. We're still at war in Iraq. We're still at war in Afghanistan. We're bombing eight different countries. You know, guys like John Bolton would love to add Syria to the list, would love to add Iran to the list. And listen, I have my issues with Mehdi Hassan. Believe me, I have many issues with Mehdi Hassan. But the fact of the matter is, this question that he asked him, without a doubt, John Bolton should be asked this question every time he ever does an interview from now until the end of time. Because, yes, this guy's a war criminal. It's as a direct result of his actions and his pushing of the administration and the arguments he was making behind the scenes that led to an illegal and offensive war against a country that didn't attack us and minimum 200,000 Iraqi civilians died and torture was ordered to cover it up. And he doesn't care. He, 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 clearly, he doesn't think even for a second about all the people 
who are dead as a result of his favorite policy that he pushed for and won behind the scenes in Washington, D.C. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't care. And he's drawing these ridiculous distinctions, which aren't even true, because he's not in favor of only the four-week war and then we get out. Because he still wants to be there today. And by the way, even if we did what he said here, oh, four weeks and then we're out, you can't take out the authoritarian strongman who's been leading a country for a long time, get out and then expect everything's going to be hunky-dory. No, of course you were going to have rival warring factions because power abhors a vacuum. And so you get rid of the strong man, what's going to happen? We got other, there's probably going to be internal fights in the Ba'ath Party, which is the party Saddam Hussein was part of. Um, you're probably going to have sectarian religious conflicts like Sunni and Shia because Iraq is a country that's divided along Sunni and Shia lines. I forget the exact numbers, but I think it was something like 60-40, 40% Shia, 60% Sunni. I could be wrong about that. I'm going like eight years ago off stuff I read. Um... So yeah, if you topple Saddam and get out, internal fighting in the in the Ba'ath Party, you know, we already Ahmed Chalabi was the guy who we wanted to lead Iraq and he had no popular support, but that's who we were trying to put into power. And then you get sectarian violence at the same time, the the breakdown of law and order, the looting. You know, you can't it's insane. No country put aside the conversation about whether or not this intervention worked, as people like to say in Washington, DC. As a matter of principle, we don't have the right to willy-nilly invade countries and topple governments. Why? Because international law has to mean something, or else how would we like it if China or Russia randomly decided, you know what, the U.S. is acting a little too undemocratically. I mean, the person who's in power now didn't even win the popular vote. So that's kind of tyrann tyrannical and authoritarian. We're going to go do regime change and put somebody we want into power. Would we be okay with that? No, 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 it's okay. It's, we're going to be in and out in four weeks. China says to us, if we're, if we're, we're going to be in and out in four weeks, so it's okay. It's not a war. Or if it is a war, it's, we're doing it because we mean well and we want to bring about a better country. So we're going to topple your government. What? <laughs> if anybody does it to us, oh my God, we would immediately say this is tyrannical, this is authoritarian, this is evil, this is illegal, this is not allowed. We do it to them, shh, we have the right. We just assume we have the right to do these things. Because John Bolton is an arrogant imperialist. So he should be asked this question nonstop. Um, his answers are absolutely terrible. He's a war criminal. And if you're part of the resistance, and you're rehabilitating this guy, you are such a rube. You really are. Because, guys, these things matter. These things mean something. The Iraq War killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians. That matters. That means something. When you rehabilitate a war criminal like this, what you're saying is those lives really don't matter. Those actions are... He's never even had... There's never been justice. And what you're doing is you're sending a signal, yeah, I don't care. I'll rehabilitate the worst monsters in history as long as I could try to burn Trump. And that's the thing. He's had some disagreements with Trump, so now he's held up as, you know, some sort of resistance person. No. Mehdi Hassan really put into context who this guy really is, and his answers were horrendous.